Hey guys, today I wanted to give you a tour of my homemade truck camper. My name is Dave, follow me along. Well, let's first start off with the question, why do I make these truck campers? For those who are maybe just watching this video aren't familiar with my channel, I've made uh, three of these campers so far. This one is the third one and I call it 3.0. Well, it all started uh, from a genesis of me wanting to have a truck camper, but I couldn't find one on the market that fit all of the needs that I wanted, coupled with the fact that they're very expensive and typically very heavy. Now, I've been a, a, a woodworker most of my adult life, and um, one day I just said, hey, maybe I could build one of these. I found a website for a company that, as I understand it now, is not in existence anymore that made cedar truck campers. They had no video presence or anything like that that I knew of, but I did see a few photographs. I looked at them and I used that as inspiration to come up with my own design. Now these truck campers are very light. This one is going to weigh probably in the neighborhood of about 900 pounds dry. The superstructure, or the portion that sits above the bed of the truck, is made primarily of cedar. Now, I source my cedar from cedar fence pickets that I just buy at a local home store. And uh, I plane them down. I build a cedar frame structure by laminating different pieces together. And then I sheath that structure with the cedar planks that are laid out and uh, bound together via a lap joint. Now the thing that made all of this work was I used a, an exterior grade caulking between all of your joints to waterproof it, but also I found through my experimentation that it provides a strong adhesive quality that holds everything together. Now using that caulking was key because those who are woodworkers know that wood moves quite a bit with moisture and temperature. So I had to had, have an adhesive uh, foundation that allows the movement of the wood, particularly ac uh, across cross grain situations. And this is what I've came up with and this design has been tried and true. It's attractive looking, it's easily sourced from materials that almost any of you guys could buy at your local home store, and it's lightweight. Let me show you guys, this is the back of the camper obviously, let me show you a couple features. Uh, this door was completely handmade by myself. The frame structure of it is oak, and that provides extra strength and durability, particularly as it pertains to the lock set. This is a, a residential lock set, very much like you'd find in your house. I use a uh, combination keypad, which is convenient in cases where you don't want to have to carry keys with you, or if you're going in and out, you don't have to lock the, de uh, the deadbolt every time. But I do have a deadbolt that's keyed on both sides, and that's for security. For example, if someone were to break that rear window, uh, they couldn't just simply reach through and undo the deadbolt. Now up here, next to the door, you guys see a hatch. And that hatch uh, opens up and that allows the venting of an AC unit which is mounted inside. That AC unit is a 5000 BTU uh, uh, window unit that you would typically see in our house. Now, as you guys will see, and I get an electrical system, that AC unit is plenty big enough to cool off this camper, and uh, it can run off-grid off of my solar generator. The, uh, one of the big questions a lot of people ask is, how do I get in and out of the truck? Most people are used to seeing a traditional cup, uh, truck camper that has camper jacks mounted to the side. And though you could with this one, I chose not to for a couple reasons. They're heavy, I think they're ugly looking, and they're expensive. Now it does take away the convenience of me able to pull into a campsite, remove it from the truck and drive the truck away. But because this is so light, when I made this and I put it on the truck, I consider it a semi-permanent installation. Now of course you can remove it, but as opposed to many people using truck campers where they'll take them on and off per trip, I keep this on the truck relatively permanently. But the, it didn't answer the question, how do you get it on and off? Well, I used a combination of uh, standalone camper jacks. And frankly, I just got a bunch of friends and for the most part, we just lifted this on. If you guys go to my channel, there's actually a, a short which shows us putting this camper 
on the truck. The tub of the truck, of the camper, or essentially the part that slides into the bed of the pickup truck, is made primarily of plywood. Now I covered it in this bed liner material uh, to waterproof it. The camper is made to fit on a full-size truck, and in this case I have a Chevy 2500. Um, the whole camper, the portion that sits in the bed of the truck, is seven foot three inches long. And uh, on my particular truck, if you were, uh, the overall clearance is just about 10 feet. If you were to take a measurement from the bottom of this camper to the very uh, top, the highest point in here, it's uh, 83 and a half inches. Now, the cab over section uh, extends, in this case, the full length of the cab of my truck, and inside houses a full-size bed. Hey guys, how's it going? So this is the interior of the camper. As you can see, all of the cabinets are all handmade, and they're out of that same cedar that the exterior of the camper is made from. Now they have a wax finish applied to them, which is very durable and gives it a very natural look. Uh, let's talk about the layout. So looking here would be like looking from the door, which is in the rear of the camper forward. And as you guys can see up here, this is the cab over bed area. This contains a full size mattress. Uh, down here, this is an accent wall. This would be the wall that's immediately adjacent to the back of the cab of the truck. And then right here in this area is a little seating area, as you guys can see right there, with uh, two chairs. And this is actually a walnut table, and it does uh, tilt slightly back and forth. Now this whole table right here can be removed and the upper seat cushions on each of these seats actually lays flat across here and this can function as a uh, second bed area. So it could sleep three people, two up there and one down here. Let's scoot over here. So from this angle, we're looking back from the uh, sleeping area backwards. So this right here is the door and this right here is the kitchen area okay so you guys can see we've got some upper cabinets this is where i store food a bookshelf area and then right over here we have another upper cabinet in this case i store some clothes and stuff like that now this uh, countertop right here is all walnut and this includes a legitimate and real copper sink. Now this sink just drains out to the side of the camper. Uh, there is no holding tank in here. Now the way water is fed to this is with this device right here, which is a USB rechargeable uh, pump. And this is tied into two water tanks, which are stored in these um, uh, under cabinet or under counter cabinets here. So there's two of these seven gallon tanks right here. And these are connected with a tube up to the faucet for the sink. And then of course down here, there's a lot of additional storage for a variety of things. So the two water tanks and storage. Now you guys may be wondering, uh, where is the stove in this whole situation? So what I opted to do, and again, kind of the, the trend that I'm going with this is the idea of modularity. I thought this countertop was absolutely beautiful and I found it to be more useful to have this countertop open than to have a built-in dedicated stove. So what I do is when I go to use the stove in here, I have one of these uh, one burner butane, butane stoves that I just set up here and I use. Now I, I've also used the two burner stove. So essentially you can just take your favorite camp stove 
uh, stow it underneath here in the cabinet. And when you need it, use it up here on the counter. And we don't, when you don't need it, put it away. Over here on this side is this big central cabinet. Okay. Now, as you guys saw right here, this is the refrigerator. It's a 12 volt DC compressor, uh, chest style refrigerator, meaning that it opens up like this. Uh, these things are very, very efficient. And this one is an Iceco JP45, so 45 quart. And it's a very efficient, high quality fridge. Down here is the electrical powerhouse for this camper. And that's the Blue Eddy EB240. It's a really big solar gen. Now, for those who may not be familiar, a solar generator, the contemporary industry name for a three-in-one unit. It contains a big lithium-ion battery, an uh, in, inverter, a thousand-watt inverter, and a solar charge controller. Uh, this camper has uh, over uh, 460 watts of solar mounted on the roof. And that's fed in through into this uh, Blue Eddy EB240. It also has several USB plugs on the front to charge your devices. And uh, this right here is a DC output. And this runs into a fuse box, which is tucked in back there, which powers the built-in lights. Uh, over here is an additional... USB charger, say for example, if you were laying in bed, you want to charge your phone. Uh, and there's uh, some outside lights and of course the DC compressor fridge. Right here is a big cabinet storage area and you guys can see it's open from both sides. And this allows you to have pass through uh, access to the storage in here, which I found to be very useful because this is quite a deep storage right here. As you guys can see, I can fit my whole arm all the way back in here. So this leaves room to put a lot of stuff. As you guys can see right here, this is uh, some custom leather work that's actually part of this as a decorative element. These are some walnut spacers. And this is hand stamped with some symbols here you guys can see. These don't necessarily mean anything specific. This is just artistry. Down here, let me put this down here. This right here is a cabinet. Now for pur my purposes, it's meant to store a chemical toilet, but of course you could store other items in there. And this thing right here is a removable table or a removable box. It has a opening lid. So this serves three purposes. One is this would sit in between the two bench areas and the two backrests for the benches would rest on this to help uh, make a solid foundation for the bed platform. It functions as a storage box. I commonly just use it as a trash can. And then finally, it's strong enough to sit on to where a third person could sit on this in the middle of the floor and eat at the dining room table. Uh, coming to the floor, the floor is actually a wood floor. Let me lift this up here. This is cedar. It's got that same wax finish that the rest of the interior cabinets have. So let's talk about insulation in here. You guys can see you have some overhead lights here. So the insulation, this camper is actually insulated very well with three kinds of insulation, but all of them are the foam board type that you would see. Most of the surface area that you see covered with this brown fabric right here is EPS or expanded polystyrene foam panels. And I actually covered it, uh, wrapped it in a fabric. And that serves a couple purposes. A, I think it looks good. It provides a real nice contrast against the cedar cabinetry. Um, but it's also lighter weight because traditionally, uh, if someone were to use foam board insulation like that, they would have to sheath it with a piece of Luon or perhaps cedar planks. But in this case, I just sheathed it, sheathed it or covered it in the fabric. So that saves weight. 
And I think uh, that's something I really hadn't seen before, and I think it's a pretty good and innovative use of that. I've used it in the three campers I've made so far, and I've had no problems with it. The walls are all two inches of expanded polystyrene foam panels. The roof is four inches. The floor is two inches of uh, polyiso. And the other horizontal surfaces on the wings of the camper and over the bed or the uh, cab over sleeping area is polyiso insulation. And then back here, even the door is insulated. So again, these panels right here are one inch pieces of XPS or extruded polystyrene foam panels covered in that same fabric. As far as windows in here, you see there's a back window here. There's two side windows and a note on these. The side windows actually have, I guess you could call it a shutter of sorts, an internal shutter that closes. Now, and these are secured with a leather strap right here. Now the advantage of this is it provides insulation and privacy. Um, now, these windows that are used in here are tinted, so I didn't really worry about having, and they sit very high in the camper, I didn't really worry about having an included covering such as a, a curtain, but it was more important to me to have this internal shutter that provided ultimate privacy, insulation, and if I wanted the sunlight to come through, I just simply uh, open it up. It nests up above this seating area, or this uh, bench here, and sits right here. There's also, and of course these windows open, also right here, so this is the cab over sleeping area, there is windows right here with those same coverings, and those coverings are put up on a gas strut. So you could open the window here, have more sunlight come through, open it of course to vent, and then this shuts secure when you want privacy or if you want to maintain insulation in the camper. So um, there is a lot of storage in here, more storage than you would think. It's warm, it's cozy, and I will show you guys a quick video circle around so you guys can see it in perspective. Now this, is, uh, this will be in wide angle, so it looks slightly distorted because it is hard to kind of capture it. Oh, one other final note is above here, there is a vent fan. And this is a high quality Max Air fan, uh, which I installed, which I thought was nice. Oh, and back to the AC, as I showed you guys on the outside, the AC unit sits up here. And uh, once you vent it from the back, you can turn this on uh, and this functions as AC in here. And then this flat space right here, if you wanted, is also some additional uh, you know, it could be a storage area or you could use it just as a flat countertop surface.